Welcome to the map West Mnet in BFME 1 on the patch 2.22 for a replay commentary in a great matchup between the Rohan player Moritz and his opponent is the Isengard player Balin. Uruk Pet Fern is opening for Balin. He's gonna lead forward to the settlement and now he's coming from this area to catch up those peasants and he will be able to find them. In the meantime, the second peasant is gonna rotate to this settlement over there and the Hobbit is gonna join the first peasant to try to deal damage to the Uruks and that's the reason why Isengard was kind of forced to use the Warchant. And when you see your opponent is using Warchant, you need to understand that you cannot win the fight, but it doesn't mean that you need to accept, uh, accept your feet, you know? You can run away, bring him away from you, uh, try to stall, try to buy some time. You will lose, but you wanna you can delay your loss instead of losing immediately without any fighting back, you know? So Isengard will be able to capture this settlement over there as a slaughterhouse. Uh, but the Hobbit was able to make it to this lumber mill. And that's the downside of a lumber mill compared to a slaughterhouse. Because it's very vulnerable to a Hobbit who can definitely kill your lumber mill workers to deny you the resource income you are looking for and you also desperately need at the beginning of the game. That's why you can also build a slaughterhouse in the front and only build one lumber mill. Of course, it will hurt you because you will have less wood bonus, but overall you get more money because your workers don't have to be replaced over and over again. Now he needs to invest around about 150 just to replace his killed workers, you know? More peasants are coming from the Rohan player with double farm and I think he's gonna get even more peasants. That's why the steeple is a bit too lead. Yeah, he's actually spamming hella a lot of peasants they are coming from everywhere that's the power of rohan that's the power of the peasant spam and now going for the for the steeple finally and before the steeple will be fully built up and the first rohirrim is going to be there the uruk is going to already hit level two which will give isengard the momentum you know the time advantage which you can use to creep the entire map so you can creep this map get the outpost on the map west mnet the outpost control is crucial there are actually four outposts in total and all of them are controlling a very important pathway uh, which allows the player to get from one side of the map to the other side of the map, you know? Because the middle is kind of cracked though. We there are two creeps you need to get through. So you can only use this pathway in between which will lead you to the Isengard castle. Then you need to move to, uh, you know, close to the castle to the settlements. So that's why most of the time people will use the side lanes but you know look at the side lanes if you get this outpost you will block this side lane if you get this outpost you will block this side lane you know outpost control is crucial on this map and also pretty easy for the evil factions to protect because all rohan has to do get the outpost put crossbowmen inside the outpost build one tower get one pikeman close and then noro hiram can approach you and if peasants will come your tower and the crossbowmen inside the Zita will handle it for you Nizen has a good looking castle by the way, very good look, very good looking castle, level 2 Uruk Pit will hit rank 2, rank 3 very very soon, but that's gonna be a feeding fiesta over there, the Uruks are left alone, oh my god, uh, Rohirrim will get so many power points from this beautiful trample, almost slaughtered every single Uruk, and Vorchan has to be used now, but after taking so much damage, the Vorchan is not gonna be even that great, it will just be used to creep this work, but I think that was the plan all along. It was just executed poorly. Mary is still alive, by the way, blocking the settlement. This farm has been protected, very important. Full base now by Roh for Rohan. He needs to build up the well in the last spot. That's going to be also his plan. Um, I would love to see a Lourdes in this matchup, but also especially on this map. Because Lourdes has two potential creeps he can take. And one of them all alone is going to bring him to rank 3. Which will unlock the carnage, you know. Super important spike for Lourdes, as you know. Will give him a lot of self-peel and self-defense potential. You know, basically allowing the player of Isengard to play a bit less careful with Lourdes. You can just send him in solo. He's fast. And whenever you get caught, you can use, you know, switch to the bleed form. And then use carnage. And you will have time to bring reinforcement during all this time. The creep is going to be taken by Rohan. That's going to be the creep for Aizen. He was already able to creep that. It looks like he want to go for the second creep, but Rohan is already done uh, with the 
Warg layer. The only the goblin layer is remaining. This creep is going to be taken by Isengard. It's good for Isen. You want to take as many creeps as you potentially can to deny Rohan to capture the three power points in the pocket and summon the elves. Hobbit will be disclosed from the Palantir. He cannot be hidden anymore. And the pikemen of Isengard will bring the Hobbit to Isengard. <laughs> Mary, no! He was so young. Ooh, he was lucky that they didn't, didn't switch to the porcupine formation there. I mean, he's gonna get some experience, but if the pikemen get to hit you, it will hurt you. And also smart move, I mean, not smart move, that's what I was trying to say. Not a smart move from Aizen to not go for Lourdes. Lourdes is essential, way more important than, than the armory. He's going for Lourdes, but a little bit too late. I think he was cash looting quite big. Um, now Rohan might be able to creep this, by the way, by luring the troll away with his Theodin King. Now the Rohirrim can commit to this creep and take it down easy peasy. But imagine if Lourdes gets there and pins the guy and kills him. Oh my god, talking about killing him. Troll. Oh my god, he's lucky that the troll switched and gave up on Theodin. That's why I was not paying attention to the elves. The elves will be summoned to clean up some pikemen. And they might be able to deny Lourdes from creeping this. Lourdes is almost level 3 though. He's gonna use the Warchan on the pikemen. The pikemen are just hard focusing down the lair. But if the pikemen are dead, Lourdes will have no backup. He is still not level 3. He's gonna throw the sword. Who's gonna get it? Who's gonna get it? Oh, Lord's got it still, level 3. He has the Carnage now, which kind of should put him in a good spot. And it looks like the fighting Urukai will be able to get away as the tower is building up, which should be enough to protect them. You can also put the put your Lords inside this tower, by the way. That's also a possibility. So, the map is looking like 50-50. Aizen has definitely great amount of map control and great amount of resource income which will give him the chance to get freely to the to the mid game spike in which isengard in my opinion is the strongest if we've, we've upgraded uruks in a level almost four lords he will have a lot of dps and a lot of um potential to win every single all-out fight all-out battles throughout the entire game theodin um is level or rank rank almost three that's good works are i like the works you know i think they can um be annoying Pressure the map a little bit. Crash settlements, your pikemen should not be able to reach, like this one in the front, but especially this one in the back. And, you know, kind of force your opponent to have to react to them. Uh, Lutz. There comes the carnage. He's using the head. He doesn't even need to use his sword to kill the king of Rohan. And almost level 5. It's the proof that he is the most cost efficient hero in all middle earth and by killing those peasants he will just get rank 5 by now boom bam level 5 beautiful and yet again easy Rowan is kind of doomed though I'm telling you that much Moritz is doomed um, he needs to find a solution to this problem and uh, I don't but I can't tell you what the solution can be like, I, I'm assuming he's now far, far behind of the Isengard player. He doesn't even have, you know, heavy armor. Um, he doesn't even have fire arrows yet on his on his uh, Rohirrim archers. He has no money for Legolas, not for Gimli, not for Aragorn. And he basically ha is playing the game with only two farms outside. And that's also about to be changed. As Isengard is taking down the only two outer settlements Rohan is currently under his control. Full base by Aizen, flawless gameplay. Made a couple of mistakes, so I need to give him that one. Made a couple of mistakes. Ooh, be careful with the Walk Rider, so. Rank 3 is not a joke. You will lose the 1v1 one one against a, uh, with a rank 1. You know, the thing about Rohan is if you're. Theodin somehow gets rank 3. If Isengard somehow makes a mistake and, you know, kind of loses his Lourdes, will also cost him lots of momentum. So this matchup doesn't really um, have, how can I say, 
a, lo a lot of room for mistakes. It doesn't have that. So if you make too many mistakes, even if you are ahead, it can just change in a second. Losing a horse can lead you to that situation. Losing a hero can lead you to that situation. All of that will deny your momentum and create a new momentum for your opponent. Which should be avoided, you know? Like Glorious Charge can be one of these momentums I was talking about. With three Yomon Archers, a Fire Arrow is going to be purchased. Rohan should be poor though. Rohan has definitely not the wealthiness. And Isengard cannot siege yet. There comes the Elven Summon to clean up this rank 3 pikeman. Uh, Lord should be fine. He's going to use Cripple on Theodin. Uh, will he commit to the Theodin? He shouldn't. Smart move to not to. He's going to use Ooh, Carnage. But now he's surrounded by too many Rohirrim warriors. And that's what I was talking about. You see, that's exactly what I was talking about. Like a mistake like this, now Lourdes is dead. You might say, but Shanks, it's totally fine. Lourdes is dead, but he has the whole map. But listen to me. Lourdes was level 5, okay? Level 6. It will take you 2 minutes and 15 seconds to get him back on the field. And 2 minutes and... Like average game duration in DVM is like 10 minutes. Like 20% of that time, you need to now reinvest into getting a hero you already had on the field. In, th in, this, in this 2 minutes, can... There, there is a lot of stuff that can happen, you know? Like, he can, in this two minutes, he can take both the outposts down. I mean, he's only one. Uh, he can take the outposts down, he can take the entire map under his control. All of that can happen in two minutes. Because without Lourdes, there is nothing that can stop this Theodin from getting to your base and uh, sieging you. Which, unfortunately, isn't happening right now as we are talking, but should definitely happen. You want to bring the fight to them. Look, imagine if he would just go there. Look at this food he would be, it, you know, getting served on the table. Literally one trample and you get a whole rank and you have, all of a sudden you have Glorious Charge, you know? I mean, he's fighting for the map control, which is also not wrong. But I think after killing an important hero like Lourdes, you, it's always, you know, great to do a uh, base checking, you know? See what your opponent is up to. Is he going for the siege? What is the plan? What is he cooking? And maybe there is a potential of you going in. And there would be indeed a potential for him to go in. And kill all of this army from Isengard. Ooh, bad trample into the pikeman. What you want to do in this situation. Is you want to put your hero next to your Rohirrim archer. And make sure that he's passively leveling up. Okay, Lord's back on the menu boys. Um, no Saruman yet. We have in total 9 power points for Balin. He has the power points he needs for the Freezing Rain. I'm assuming we will have also Saruman very soon. I'm assuming wrong. He just went uh, for a whole army. Um, I'm a big fan of... Oof, what a bad trample again. I'm a big fan of sieging when you know that you can succeed. And for that um, knowledge of making... Uh, for, for, my, um, for my personal safety I'm a person I don't like to siege Rohan or Gondor when I have no Saruman. On, there are exceptions to this rule. For example, I kill his Theodin, then I have momentum again. I know I can crush him. I have Rain. Even if I'm 80% sure I will destroy his castle, I would like to be 100% sure. And that can only, only be uh, possible with Saruman. Rain is available. But because you see, he has only... Um, I mean, he has not only. He has still five power points. He needs only one more to unlock his end summon. And end summon on top of the army. We're ready to ride everything can happen. He has this... He has this combo bonus of the pikeman heart. And the siege will begin now. You want to stop this ram, no matter what, he's going to be able to snipe it. But unfortunately, he had no bleed, so it's going to take him a bit longer time to kill it. Oh, he didn't even finish it off. Oof. But he's going, that's a smart move from Rohan. I like what he's doing. That's what you are supposed to do. Sneak into the siege works and make sure that you are destroying it. It will leave him only the option of destroying your wall with these two rams which you can and should be always able to protect that's why in the lead game rams are not good what did he die how did he die he didn't die actually 
but he was about to be dead oh he's almost level he's level four actually okay that's that's gonna change everything you also got six power points in total you see this push from isengard did really do nothing that's why ballista are better because then you can keep your range it's difficult for you to protect them uh, ramps with archers because they will just go in and they need to be you know pretty much next to the wall and rohirrim can destroy them quite easily as you have seen in this uh, attempt of siege and you see this couple of mistakes like isengard was in a much better spot five minutes ago and now all of a sudden we have highly leveled rohirrim army and with glorious charge and i want to see that actually i just want to see the glorious charge battle Ooh, the ends are going to war and that's a beautiful end i mean forcing the opponent to either risk it or take it and he uh, he needs to deal with Trohirim. he needs to deal with theodine he needs to deal with Trohirim matches and to end simultaneously and he will i mean lurz's leadership is the key to victory here for eisen the the fact that this is still winning for eisen is lurz Loki, it's just Lourdes, you know, which allows you to burst down through everything. Um, he will still lose the fight, though. But imagine if Saruman would be around here. Imagine you had a hero that could instant, instantly steal the summon and ends from your opponent. Imagine how crazy this would be. That's my whole point. But Cripple is on cooldown. Lourdes will be sent into the tower. Smart move, but it will delay. Not gonna deny. Uh, Rohan should definitely make sure to not get uh, to not let Lourdes get away from this area. And all of that because he was playing without Saruman. I think Saruman was getting cooked here. Now he's gonna get crippled, but it's gonna change absolutely nothing. He almost lost a level five though. And the outpost will be taken down one more time. And all of a sudden, we have a different game, boys. Back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And all of a sudden, we are talking about a, about a whole different outcome, outcome possibility for this epic clash between Rohan and Isengard. I mean, Glorious Charge is just built different. He has also now the King's Favor, which he should be using over and over again. It's free experience, you know. Talking about free experience, we have also Saruman. He's gonna use it. Um, we, he, needs to, he needs to wait for the for the Lords. That's super important. Um, I'm a big fan of having more than two combos only. And I think he also stopped making War Riders, which he shouldn't. He should not. I think he has enough money. No, he doesn't have enough money because he kept lo losing stuff. Um, he lost like the Siege War twice, for example. Lots of combos. They cost a lot for Isengard army. But you still need like a couple of war riders. The plan is like this. When you are fighting a big battle, your works can be your secondary army. Your primary army is going to be this one you see on your screen with Lords, Saruman, your combos. The army you want to fight against another army. That's your primary army. And your secondary army is going to be the one which is not made to fight against enemy. It's just made for pressuring the map, getting map control, making sure that your own enemy is starving that he has no resources because that's what the game is all about getting advantage for yourself and uh, works can definitely do that because look what the, look what the map is looking like these combos are way too slow to move from one settlement to another settlement you know your works can do this job much much better Saruman has to be definitely careful definitely careful Um, Lourdes gonna be there very soon. I'm hyped for this. Three combos, Lourdes, Saruman, Warchant, and Rain is gonna be available in about a minute. Okay? Now, you know, Isengard can win the 1v1 one one fight again. 10 power points, only 10 away from getting to summon the Balrog, and 5 power points away for Moritz, the Rohan player, to summon his EOD, the Offbreakers. could go for the grand harvest on his farms just to get a bit more money going for the outpost control i like it also this outpost i really like this outpost giving lots of money and value 
to Rohan. He's getting a lot of cash from this, which will also help him. I mean, Rohan is not even in the in the end game yet, you know? He can always go for Legolas, he can always go for Aragorn, especially. He's going to be essential for even more leadership for the Rohir Marches. And I think that that game is also like a perfect example for what I was always talking about. Um, even though this army is made for one purpose, <laughs> as they stated in the films, you know, um, this army can be avoided as long as there is no siege weapon that is trying to break through your walls or gate. You can easily avoid this army and do what this Rohan is doing. Go for the kills you are sure you will get. You can't win the fight against that, even not with Glorious Charge, you know. That is a warm tongue you need to take a lot of care, care about. War chant, tribal leadership for the army, and the army is supposed to counter your army. They have pikes to counter your Rohirrim, they have archers and Refiro to counter your Rohirrim archers, and they have lords to counter your heroes. So the army is literal counter to your army, but you don't have to take the fight against that. You can just go for the beast over and over again. Even though now it's easier said than done, it's level 3 furnaces all over the place. But still. Building up. Now we have 4 combos, actually. Um, I think that's going to be a problem because he has almost no command points available. He is kind of very poor. Rowan has the whole map, bro. The whole map is beside this one settlement level 3. Behind the base of Aizen, everything is looking yellow to me. So if this army falls from Aizen, he will have not the sustain in his economy to replace the army and revive his heroes. So that's like a kill or die situation for Aizen. He hopes that this army will be capable of destroying what's left from Rohan and to get the W. Because if it doesn't, he has no plan B. He has no backup plan for the case of a failure, you know, and that might very well happen. Because ends will be summoned, talking about the ends, they will get summoned actually here to deal with these combos. They are running now, the ends are going to war. Here you want to turn, turn, when they are trampling into you. He's trying to get a lot of power points collected, a lot of Rohir marches. Now this might be a B-swap, because Isengard doesn't seem to react to this play. And he's hoping that what he has inside the beast is going to be capable of defending but there is glorious charge there might be a full potential commitment and the ends are almost taking zero damage from these towers and this army with glorious charge is gonna be dangerous in the meantime Eisen doesn't seem to care with his main army his primary army is still going for a siege beautiful trample and you know what's the best part he doesn't need to care about this army all he needs to care about is to get the missing one power point in a quarter, one power point, and then he knows all he has to do is to summon AOD to kill this main army which didn't want to move. And I think that's gonna be exactly his plan. What a great play by Rohan and what a big punishment, big mistake. You cannot ignore what is about to happen and Balin messed up big time after having a phenomenal start into the game. And ladies and gentlemen, Rohan is indeed capable of destroying and defeating Isengard like you have seen in this game. If you enjoyed it, make sure to leave a like, subscribe. I will see you next time. Until then, take care of yourself. Keep hitting like a truck and as always, stay beyond standards. Peace out, boys.